is the design of wood structures. My name is John Lawson, and this is a very basic primer for mostly those of you that maybe have not done wood construction or wood design for a long period of time uh, and are trying to get a refresher of what the current methods are, or maybe some of you that have been mostly on steel and concrete structures, maybe some masonry, and are brand new to wood. So it's going to be a very basic presentation of wood and it's going to follow the format of the Code Master, which uh, SK Gosh, SKGA has, uh, um, has produced. Actually, I'm the author of it based on my wood classes. I just found it as a valuable resource I needed in my day-to-day -day teaching and found a nice platform through SKGA to, to publish it. Today's learning objectives are going to be the design of wood columns, posts, beams, joists, and rafters, very common wood elements, uh, as well as how you apply adjustment factors that affect the beam and column capacities. The Afterwards, we'll sort of deviate from what the basic information is on beams and columns, individual elements, and start looking at the wood connectors. And it'll be just a very brief introduction into the typical connectors and how they get designed, as well as a very brief introduction into wood diaphragms and shear walls. But wood connectors could be a whole webinar in itself, as well as uh, wood diaphragms and wood shear walls can be complete wood seminars, uh, webinars, and themselves too. But I'll be able to go through and highlight the, some of those provisions in the last part of the, today's presentation. So today we are just going to primarily focus on the gravity systems or the design systems of individual elements. Um, and that's really the focus of the Codemaster too. The Codemaster is inexpensive. It's only $15. And as I said, I developed it for my own students and uh, found a nice way of uh, having it laminated and presented very well. And it's very inexpensive. And my students find it a valuable resource. And it's going to, it, it's valuable for both ASD, that's allowable stress design, or LRFD, uh, load resistant factor design. Uh, and it's set up for rectangular beams and columns, sawn lumber, or glue laminated uh, timbers. It doesn't really have any other provisions for um, uh, special composite lumber that you might have. There's considerations in providing feedback and guidance for deflection, duration of loading, moisture issues, temperature, stability issues in both beams and columns, what happens with larger and smaller size members, uh, incisions, uh, repetitive use, a, a whole number of adjustment factors that we will hit each one of these today. There's also a special part that are the yellow sections in the Codemaster, which they call the secrets of the Codemaster. And these are little tidbits and little tips that are provided that sometimes experience has provided uh, insight into that are sprinkled throughout the Codemaster. And I'll try to bring those up as well. The design standards that the current Codemaster is uh, published under is the 2015 International Building Code, which goes on to adopt ASCE 710 for the loads on the buildings and the 2015 National Design Specification, which is what the wood industry has as their standard for building code provisions. The National Design Specification actually comes bundled with three publications. You have the 2015 NDS, which has the provisions of designing beams, columns, or uh, beam columns, and, and even um, anything that would be sort of a, a gravity loading. But if you start getting into wind and seismic diaphragms and shear walls, that's really under the special design provisions and wind and si for wind and seismic, a whole separate publication. There's also a supplement to the 2015 NDS, which has all the stress values, the reference design values for the different species of lumber that are available to build structures to. And the importance of this uh, webinar is that if we recognize that wood construction is very popular in the US, even though it seems to take a back seat in our universities uh, with steel and concrete really taking the forefront, and, and that a minority of universities in the US actually have regularly regular uh, wood timber engineering uh, classwork and coursework that's available. It's a shame because 80 to 90 percent of all structures in the U.S. involve timber wood frame. And in fact, uh, 96 percent of all buildings in Los Angeles County, which is just south of here, uh, and this is of all buildings, is timber frame. In contrast, if we go to Memphis, central part of the U.S., 
just as a, an example, we're looking at 89%. Um, and then 99% here in California, all residences, all homes are timber construction. So it's, uh, it's very important that an engineer start having a familiarity with timber framing. The Codemaster has a 10-step process when it comes to designing uh, out a timber frame. Some of the steps are a little more obvious than others. And so I'm going to tailor my presentation today to those 10 steps, with the first step really obviously being determine the loads and the load combinations that are involved in the design of the project.